Hello everyone, welcome to Manika IAS. Welcome to the daily news analysis session presented to you by Manika IAS. So, let's start our discussion with respect to daily news analysis and we will begin first with the topics that we'll be covering today. Today, uh, more or less, there were topics which were relevant for science and technology and surrounding genetics part of science and technology. So, we'll be looking into the topics in details. We'll be covering some basic points as well. So, let's first see the topics which are in news the one and the most important is your Gaganyan human space flight mission so uh, Prime Minister Modi has made certain announcement regarding this so we'll be looking uh, after the announcements then we'll be looking about the basics and significance of this mission So these are the aspects that we will be covering today. It is relevant for your GS paper uh, 3, space tech, both for your prelims as well as for your mains. Okay, the second is Genome 10K project. So this project has recently been completed. So we'll look after the basics of this concept and the relevance this is important for your gs paper 3 again science and technology both for prelims and for mains then simpilal simlipal tiger reserve it is a tiger reserve in odisha and here we'll be uh, looking after the various tiger reserves in odisha then we'll be looking after melanistic tigers so we'll be reading about them in detail it, it has a relevance for your gs paper 3 environment and for your prelims it is more important okay it has more potential to be asked in your preliminary exam and then this obelisk this is a new discovery Thus, it has a huge potential to be asked in your exam and we will look after it what it is. It is one of the smallest organism that has been found. So, we will be looking after this in detail since it is a new discovery. So, potential of this being asked in uh, prelims is more and you may simply get a question like a UPSC has tendency to ask obelisk which were recently seen in news is related to and then you will be getting some options okay and then you have to mark so here you know it is kind of the one of the smallest organism that has recently been find, found okay so here we'll be discussing about virus viroids and obelisk okay so let's first look after the very first topic which is your gaganyan human space flight mission so as we all know that it is the first human uh, space flight that India will be taking. So that is why we call it as Gaganyaan. Okay. And in the, rec uh, the, the recent update is the name of the four astronauts which have been designated for this particular flight, human flight to the space has been announced. So at this point of stage, you need not remember the names because this is not the final crew. The final crew will be picked up from the, these, but these have been shortlisted among those who were getting training from Russia. So as we all know, we are getting training the uh, from Russia with respect to space mission. Okay, so Russia is providing training and these are Group Captain Prasannath, Balakrishnan Nair, Group Captain Ajit Krishnan, Group Captain Angad Pratap and Wing Commander Shubhanshu Shukla. So although you need not remember uh, these names at this point of uh, time, when the final crew will be announced, so you must remember because this is the very first time that India is having a space mission. So you must know the names at least. Okay. So <coughs> now let's see about Gaganyaan. See, in Gaganyaan, three flights will be sent into the orbit, two will be unmanned 
and one will be manned space flight. Okay. <clears throat> one human space flight. It has it is called orbital module will have three Indian astronaut, including a woman. So as we see that they have announced four uh, uh, as of now, and then three will be picked up. So it will be in the lower Earth orbit and will. So this is important point to remember that it will be in low Earth orbit at an altitude of 300 to 400 kilometer for five to seven days. This will be their stay period. So these are the important for prelims uh, point of view. These are the important points from prelim point of view. Then what is the significance? It will demonstrate the India indigenous capacity to undertake human space flight to low earth orbit. So demonstrate indigenous capacity of India will give another uh, tick mark in the global era. Now the second thing is it will it is expected to pave way for a sustained Indian human space flight exploration program in the long run. So this will act as a, a, a kind of a, a landmark for further uh, space flights that India can take up. Okay, now <coughs> so uh, what are the preparation that so far has been occurred? So in ISRO has. Uh, undertaken various tests which include integrated airdrop test, test vehicle mission and pad about test. So uh, and there were three technical facilities which were also dedicated by the Prime Minister in this in his recent visit. So the one is state of art trisonic wind tunnel at VSSC. So it will produce a control uniform airflow over scale modules of rockets and aircraft to assess their aerodynamic characteristics. So basically you need to remember these names. Konsi facility hai, function kya hai aur hai kaha pe. So it, will, it is a trizonic wind tunnel at Vikram Sarabha Institute. So then you have, uh, it will produce a control uniform airflow over scale modules of rockets and will try to understand the aerodynamic characteristics okay so it will help in designing the launch vehicle projects the second is integrated facilities for pslvs ye kahan pe satish dhawan space center in sri harikota theek hai to pslv ki integration facilities satish dhawan space center ke andar it will give isro the capability to increase number of pslv missions in a year from 6 to 15 because you have integration facility launch pad ke pass hi banwadi. So this will help in increasing the number of missions. Then the semi-cryogenic integration engine and stage test facility at ISRO Propulsion Complex IPRC in Tamil Nadu. Okay. So you remember this. This is in Tamil Nadu. That was in Sriharikota. It will be used to test the SCE 2000 semi cryogenic engine which will be used for Gaganyaan mission and stages which will increase the payload capability of launch vehicle. Okay. Further, India is also eyeing on a space station by 2035. It has been said by Prime Minister. Another thing is ISRO has also planned that it will send astronauts to moon by 2040. So these are the future outlooks. So again, uh, as always, I give you the pointers that you can add in your main answer writing. So this is whenever you get a question surrounding space ambitions or space project of India, uh, space penetration of India, then there you can write them in the conclusion part that India will be eyeing this. Even if you get a question on Gaganyaan, then there also you can add like the previous line that we discussed, it will add as a sustainable platform for future launches. And it will also help in uh, achieving the plans of sending astronauts to moon by 2040 and having its own space station by 2023, 2035. So this is something that you can write in your conclusion for your answers. Okay, so write this in your notes. Then let's move to the next topic, which is your 10,000 genome project. So it is also written as genome 10k project okay 
So Department of Biotechnology, which was undertaking this project, has finally announced that they have completed this particular project. So what was the agenda? The agenda was to create a database of 10,000 genomes. Okay. Whole genome sequences out of India. The Genome 10K project established in 2009 by a consortium of biologists and genome centers determined to facilitate sequencing analysis of 10,000 vertebrate species. Okay. Now, India has first uh, completed a human genome project in 2006, which created a database of representative of India's population diversity. Okay. So, uh, this was first, which was completed in 2006. This is out of India, 10K vertebrate ka genome sequencing ka project. Hai. So, what is genome sequencing? So, we all know that uh, we have See, we uh, as humans have DNA as the genetic material and this is the structure, double helical structure of DNA and then you have various A, G, C, T, various base pairs here of DNA and when you sequence them, if you write in a thread like And when you study this entire genome and you figure out what are the base pairs there, what are the proteins that are leading to these base pairs, now that is referred to as genome sequencing. Basically figure out the sequence of nucleotide base pairs in, uh, in the genome of an individual is referred to as genome sequencing. Okay. So basically they wanted to uh, cover 10,000 genome sequences which they have been able to achieve. Now let's see. What were the institutes that were involved? And the main were Indian IISC, Bangalore, and the Center of Cellular and Molecular Biology, Hyderabad. They were leading this project under uh, Department of Biotechnology. So what they have figured out, that the Indian population is of 1.3 billion. It consists of 4,600 population group, and many of them are endogamous. These have contributed to the genetic diversity of current population. Okay. Now, the Indian population has distinct variation and often many disease-causing mutations are amplified within some of these groups. Now, what it is trying to say is that we have 46 population groups. That means uh, there are 4,600 groups jinka genome uh, are different to each other, but among them, they are kind of similar genome. Okay. <clears throat> And a majority of them are endogamous. Say for example, try and understand this point. This will help you in understanding the basic concept of biotechnology as well. So this is a set of population. So India, we have 1.3 billion population. Okay. And in this, we have this 4600 groups. 1.3 billion may say we just have 4600 groups which is one responsible for diversity because we have this number of huge groups but at the same time if you see the population then and you relate it with the number of groups these groups are endogamous that means they marry within themselves and as a result of which it is leading to rare just give me a second so as a result of which it is giving you uh, the rare uh, genomes or disease are becoming more apparent okay this is responsible for the endogamy thing between this in this 4600 population groups majority of endogamous is it is related to the depiction of rare genome diseases 
why i'll be uh, giving you in detail give me a minute so say for example how the we will will first understand how the uh, genome transfer happens say this is a parent 1 this is your parent 2 okay so the dna which is a double helical structure and this is the dna of the other parent and when you are to when you have offsprings then half dna of this parent will come in another half of this parent will come in here so it is a mix of two uh, diseases uh, two uh, parent okay and whenever you see for a dominant trait to express itself dominant matlab jo majority mein available hoga jo jo zyada powerful trait hoga it need one genome to have that expression say for example kisi ka say for example jaise b positive blood group hai okay so b blood group ka dominant hai theek hai तो अगर इस पेरेंट के पास बी है और इस पेरेंट के पास ओ है तो भले तो सिर्फ एक इस पेरेंट से सिर्फ अगर बी आता है और इस पेरेंट से ओ आता है तो इवेंचुअली ब्लड ग्रुप बी होगा ओ नहीं होगा ओके okay. लेकिन अगर किसी का रेयर है जो रिसेसिव ट्रेड्स होते हैं बेसिकली रिसेसिव ट्रेट्स के लिए इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट कि जो आपका एक्स जो जिनोम है वो दोनों में से आए दोनों ही एक्सप्रेसिव होने चाहिए ठीक है सो अगर सपोज इस अगर द बेबी हैज टू हैव अ ओ ब्लड ग्रुप देन इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट कि इनका एक के ऊपर बी हो और इस वाले के ऊपर हो एंड देन इफ दिस ट्रेंड विल कम टू दिस चाइल्ड एंड एनी ऑफ दिस विल कम देन इवेंचुअली द बाय प्रोडक्ट विल बी ओ ओके सो दोनों के दोनों स्टैंड्स के अंदर इट वाज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू हैव ओ एज अ जीनोम ठीक है बट यहाँ पे इफ समबडी वाज टू डिपेक्ट समबडी वाज टू हैव बी ब्लड ग्रुप व्हिच इज अ डोमिनेंट ब्लड ग्रुप तो वो अगर एक स्ट्रैंड में भी बी है दूसरे में ओ हो या ना हो उससे फर्क नहीं पड़ता इवेंचुअली द ब्लड ग्रुप विल बी बी ओनली सो दैट इज वाई वी से कि जो रिसेसिव ट्रेट है दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर रेयर डिजीज डिजीजेस and if you see the endogamic pattern the chances of rare diseases to express themselves increase because agar suppose b b hai dono genome par yahan pe o hai to the child will be b o and b o okay so iske andar to b aayega lekin imagine now if if endogamy hai to another family will also have b o b o theek hai now they may the chances is <coughs> 25% percent chances है कि recessive trait which is O will show, right? Now similarly if you re keep on repeating the pattern, the chances of rare diseases or rare blood groups or rare 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 recessive genes to express themselves increases. That is why we say that endogamy is responsible for expression of disease which were suppressed so far. Okay. Now let's move ahead. so this are these are the harmful mutations which are that are less prevalent in the world <coughs> harmful mutations are less prevalent in the world but located in endogamous group at a high frequency related to their population in india and the reason being the endogamy practice between the gene groups so harmful mutation world ke andar kam hai but india ke andar population ke relative zyada hai okay so the and the reason we have discussed now if you see outcomes kya hoge is projects ke it will give give a deeper insight to india's population diversity as we discussed and uh, improve diagnostic methods and medical counseling because eventually we will know the genome patterns and we know the expected uh, uh, genetic disease that that may occur and that are 
have the potential uh, to be seen in a particular individual. So that is why you can improve the diagnostic methods as well as medical counseling. Now the creation of a biobank housing 20,000 blood samples at the center of brain research coupled with the data archive of the Indian Biological Data Center exemplified the project's commitment to transparency, collaboration, future research endeavors. So they will also be creating a biobank which will be having 20,000 blood samples where they have, they have get their genomes and they studied the genomes. So this will help you in improving the uh, 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 studies. Okay. <coughs> United Kingdom, China and United States are among the countries that have programs to sequence at least 1 lakh of their genomes and we will be moving in that direction as well. Now let's move to the next topic which is your Simlipal Tiger Reserve. See, the Odisha government has asked the NTCA that is National Tiger uh, Conservation Authority that they want to introduce female tigers from some other tiger reserves into the uh, Simlipal Tiger Reserve. And the reason being that this is again related to endogamy. You will understand the concerned over sizable number of pseudo melanistic tigers in the Simlipal Tiger Reserve largely due to inbreeding. Inbreeding is a word which is used in animals and which is equivalent to endogamy in humans. Okay. Here also because of inbreeding you have larger number of pseudo melanistic tigers in Simlipal and that is why you want they want in order to increase the diversity that you introduce some of the tigers, female tigers from outside so that the progeny could be uh, uh, differed to the uh, pseudo melanistic tigers as well. Okay. And you have that diversity. So, Odisha Tiger Estimation Report 2020-23, they said that 30 tigers were found in the state's forest. Okay. And the Simlipal has 24 adult tigers. It is the largest share of the state forest. Subse zada adult tigers, tigers in general are available in the Simlipal Tiger Reserves. And all it has, it is home to all the uh, 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 female tigers in the state. That is why they want introduction of tigers from some other states. Okay. And there they have 13 adult tigers, 7 females and 6 males were found pseudo melanistic. So, 24 se 13 were pseudo melanistic and then out of this you have 6 females. So, so if you see the inbreeding will further cater to pseudo melanism. So, this particular pseudo melanism is in sort of a, a mutation in the gene that will be more apparent okay if you keep on doing the inbreeding okay and it also mentioned that no other wild habitat in the world has pseudo melanistic tiger and this is the reason whenever you get a question you will get a question uh, if you have around melanistic uh, tigers then they can ask you where they are found so simlipal tiger reserve is the answer so you must remember this because nowhere in the world in wild Pseudo melanistic tigers are available. So, it is exclusively available in Simlipal Tiger Reserve. So, this is a very important point from your preliminary point of view. Apart from what we have discussed, this is again an important point. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so these are the, uh, this is a picture of melanistic tigers. Melanistic basically comes from the term melanin which is responsible for this black color of stripes. Okay. It is a result of inbreeding into the present tiger population. So they want to increase genetic diversity in Simlipal by introducing female tiger from the other region. Okay. So we had discussed this point. Now what are the migal, uh, uh, melanistic tigers? So the coat color and the pattern of black tigers are due to single mutation in transmembrane aminopeptase peptidase Q. Okay. And this mutation is called Sulo. Melanism. So there is a mutation in transmembrane aminopeptidase Q TACPEP gene. Okay. 
you do not have to remember the name but what you must know that it is the 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 this mutation is referred to as pseudomelanism and it generally make the tiger look this the strips look black so they are also referred to as black tigers okay but you must know that it is a result of mutation in a gene okay so agar hum melanistic tigers ki baat kare 37% of tiger in str are pseudomelanistic okay and they have wide merged stripes as we saw in the previous picture they are also found to move within an isolated habitat although it has one of the largest tract of contiguous forest so this is a feature these are basic features of the tigers that you must know because they can become they can come in the pointers point of a quest type of questions in prelims but other than that there is nothing much to remember what what is important for you to remember is this in 2018 state government that is odisha has initiated a program in satkosia to introduce a three pairs of tigers from madhya pradesh one was successful but two were not successful okay so this was another initiative which was took place so now let's see <coughs> the tiger reserve in the state of odisha so we have two tiger reserves one simlipal and satkosia so you must know that satkosia is in the side south of simlipal so these are the only two tiger reserves which are available in the state because you know sometime upsc has uh, uh, arranged these tiger reserve in from north to south or east to west so in that scenario you must remember that it is in the north okay now let's come to the last topic which is your obelisk before we go to obelisk we'll first look what are virus then we'll see what are viroids and then we'll discuss obelisk so what are virus virus were discovered in 1898 okay and they were the only organism who were in the boundary of living and non living because in general when viruses are roaming around they are non living however when they come in contact with the host of a living object okay they turn into a living organism that is why we say that they are on a boundary of living and non living so you do not classify them as living you do not classify them as non living but somewhere in between because in general they are non living but if they come in contact with the living organism they use them as a host and in the presence of that host they become living organism they start reproducing and replicating themselves within the host itself and that is why we say they are in the boundary okay now that, let's see what are viroids so we in after that in 1971 another a life form which was even smaller than the uh, virus was found okay so when we saw virus the structure of virus was such uh chalo we'll discuss structure later but first say what what are viroids so it was theodor diener a, who was a plant pathologist who was uh, working on the potato spender tuber disease in plants he figured out that there were some organisms which did not had a protein and a lipid coat at as it was visible in viruses so it was a naked rna that means a naked genome so agar hum structure dekhe viruses ka so this is your virus so you have new your genome in between so you have your genome in between okay and then you have outside layer which is your capsid which is your lipid layer okay so you have enclosed nucleic acid but when you see viroid it is an open nucleic acid that means an as you discussed a open genome so till the discovery of viroid it was considered the virus are the smallest particles however when the nucleic acid, uh, the viroid were discovered so they were even smaller than the viruses okay so um, we'll come to them later <clears throat> okay 
However, uh, there was this difference in uh, viroids and the virus. One difference was where virus was able to make protein. See, whenever you see any organism, any species, if you have a DNA, and there are some genomes, or for that matter, RNA also, so they code for certain amino acids. And these amino acids then form the protein. However, it was figured out in viroids, the RNA was not making protein. The only uh, functional ability of that particular RNA was that it could replicate itself. This was the only possibility. So it could just propagate. It was not responsible for any protein. Okay. However, and it was also find out that RNA of viroid was very small, 250 to 400 base pairs versus there were thousands of base pairs in your viruses. So this was the difference when you talk about virus versus viroids. And these are important points for your understanding and also important for your preliminary point of view. Mains may, they will not ask you these questions, but in prelims, you can get questions around this. Okay, so be careful. Now, uh, Scientists at Stanford University, they have found extremely simple and unusual form of life, which is they have named as obelisk. And it is somewhere between virus and viroids. Reason being, it is larger than viroids. Okay. And the discovery was possible using next generation sequencing. We'll also see what is next generation sequencing. So this is basically the structure of obelisk. Okay. So what is NGS? NGS, they yield sequence information in bits and pieces and they generate large amount of data. Chote chote pieces ke andar they generate, uh, the technology is used to generate information in bits and pieces. And you know, it was very beautifully uh, explained in the uh, form of an example. Say for example, you have a book and somebody tear the pages of the book. You know, you don't have binding now. Now if somebody has to sit and uh, figure out ki uh, sa page kiske baad aega, hai? then you literally have to read it and you have to make sense out of it and and imagine the scenario where somebody has already read the book previously now if you have to realign that book which has been torn into pieces it will be easier for you to realign because you already had made a sense out of it when you read it Similarly, what this next generation sequencing use, it already has pre data, which is uh, support, uh, which it has and using in the bits and pieces of the data, it analyze on the basis and create a entire genome. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what next generation sequencing is all about. Okay, this, they analyzed 5.4 million publicly available sequence because they use the previously available sequencing. Okay and uh, from bacteria and human gut and using this method uh, in 2 lakh 20 thousand of these bacteria they identified 29,959 different obelisk now this data is not important for you to remember but it was found in the bacteria from human gut but since they were analyzing multiple bacteria they have not been able to find out ki konsa obelisk konsa bacteria se aara hai but they have found these obliques. So what is their similarity with viroids? They observed that both organisms have circular RNA for genome. Okay. However, the RNA was longer around a thousand base pairs for obelisk. However, it was uh, very 250 and 300 base pair for viroids. So it has a larger, uh, similar to virus, they, it has <coughs> base pairs and appeared they code for two protein as well okay now one thing viroids as we discussed did not code for any protein the g genome of the obelisk they code uh, for proteins similar to viruses but as uh, similar to the viroids they do not have outer structure okay so this is the difference and similarity between virus viroids and obelisk in virus you have outer structure and nucleic acid Whereas your, uh, the genome is very, uh, has thousands of base pairs. When, when you see viroids, they, they 
do not have outer structure it is a naked genome which has about 250 to 300 base pair and when you see obliques they do not have the outer structure it is a genome but the genome is longer than the viroids and it has thousands of base pair where uh, the, both in virus and in obelisk, the genome code for protein. In viroids, the genome doesn't code for protein. So this is in CRISP, the difference in similarity between the three. It is extremely important from your preliminary point of view. So you remember this. And if you have any question, you may please ask uh, in the comment section below. So this was it for today. And I hope it was a helpful session for you. If you have any feedback to give, please give in the comment section. Thank you. Have a nice day.